And for which one of these good works is the title of this, uh, this lesson tonight, the Sabbath evening. We're going to start off with the book of uh, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. And we're going to read the fourth verse. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Read that for me, please. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Read on. Were written for our learning. Okay, so all the stuff that was written, it wasn't, it wasn't just written for, didn't have a purpose. Um, the purpose that it was written in the past, aforetime is the past, is so that you can learn, so that we can learn from the past. That's where the saying, you better believe the, the etymology, this is the etymology of the saying. Um, you, if you're supposed to learn from your history or you are doomed to repeat it, you understand? So the things that's written before time was written for our learning. Now, with Christ came back and said, hold that and get the book of St. John chapter 5. Give me another reader. I'm going to need two readers tonight. Stay where you at, Apostle Karadasar. Let me get another reader to get St. John chapter 5, um, verse 45. Let me get some water up here as well. St. John's chapter 5, verse 45. Read that, please. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. This is Jesus Christ saying that he's not going to come and make an accusation. Again, that's the job of Satan. Um, well, Satan mainly falsely accuses. Um, but Jesus wasn't going to make an accusation. Read on. There is one that accuseth you. Read on. Even Moses, in whom ye trust. What Moses told the children of Israel is after my death, um, you're going to corrupt yourselves. Okay, and he said, and I call heaven and earth to record against you. He wanted everything that was in the area, all of the rocks, the sky, the trees, the grass, everything to bear witness that he warned the children of Israel, that he gave them the laws of righteousness. He told them and taught them how they were supposed to be, um, how they were supposed to live in order to be blessed. That it's not his fault. If anybody made a decision to be evil, it wasn't because the Lord set up a bad leader, okay? That just couldn't get the message across. He did everything that he was supposed to do um, to inform the children of Israel that they should not make the decision to be negative, to be evil, okay? Read that one more time, verse 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Read on. There is one that accuseth you. Read on. Even Moses, in whom ye trust. So in, during the day of judgment, Moses will be there. He will be there. You better believe it. And he will be by, you know, your side um, when you're getting judged. And he would, his simple purpose would be, I did, I did my job. I informed him or her, him slash her, that she was not supposed to commit adultery. That he was not supposed to steal. That they was not supposed to lie. That they was not supposed to be negative. But they chose to do it anyway. Read on. For had you believed Moses. Now why did they choose to do it anyway? What's the ultimate purpose of somebody uh, deciding to be wicked? They don't believe. They ain't believe nothing Moses said. <laughs> This is what Christ is pointing out. They didn't believe that the penalties for the judgments for breaking the law was going to be exacted upon them. They didn't believe that Moses meant with God. They didn't believe that Moses was getting all of his statutes and his judgments and his precepts from God. They chose to reject that understanding. Ah, Moses is a liar. <laughs> they didn't believe him. Even though Moses, by the hand of God, did all kinds of miracles. They seen the miracles. They still didn't believe it. Remember, Jesus Christ came down himself and did miracles, and they said that he cast out devils by the devil, by the finger of Beelzebub. <laughs> this is people making decisions. That's a decision. I don't, I'm not going to believe. I'm going to believe what I want to believe. For if you believe Moses, read on, he would have believed me. Okay, so the whole purpose of negativity, of evil is, damn, you, have, you, you're not believe, you don't believe in God, no matter how much you try to twist it and, because again, you know, you know, that's how Satan hides. Satan want to make it seem like he's a believer, not a non-believer. Okay, if Satan's come up, I, no, I don't believe. Everybody, how can he deceive? So he got to make you think that he's a brother or a sister. Get to gain your trust. But he's really a non-believer. 
Read on. For he wrote of me. Read on. But if ye believe not his writings. Read it one more time. But if ye believe not his writings. Hence where the precept connects. For the things that was written aforetime were written for your learning. But if you don't believe his writings, then how can you learn? For if you believe not his writings, read on. How shall you believe my words? Which is also written aforetime. It's called the New Testament. So all those things that, was, that will benefit you, that you can learn from, that can only happen if you believe it. If you don't believe it, then how can you learn? That means you doomed. You doomed to do what? Repeat the past. What's the past that's going to be repeated? The same thing that happened to unbelievers in the past? Guess what? Same thing going to happen to you. <laughs> it's that simple. Let's go back to Romans chapter 15, verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 15, verse 4. And read it again. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Which of aforetime represents what? The past. Doesn't it, everybody? Oh. Okay, the time before us. Okay, take that word. Time before. Time before us. The things that was written in the time before us, read on. Were written for our learning. So you can learn from it, okay? What was one of the reasons, one of the things, there's many things to learn from all the stuff that was written. One of the main things to learn from what was written aforetime was how to recognize Satan. That's one of the main things that you're supposed to be learning from uh, the history. Uh, how to recognize Satan. Do everybody understand that? All right. Everybody got that? All right. Let's get the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. You're supposed to know how to recognize the devil. Okay, from what you learned from the past. Okay, starting all the way from the book of Genesis. Going all the way up. Satan has an M.O. Okay. He, you know, if you know that this is the devil, he don't, he don't stray from how he operates. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Read. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Read it again. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Yeah, Satan, the Lord ain't going to give Satan the advantage of, of you, over you. Yeah, he's the most sub two beast of the field. Okay? But the Lord ain't, didn't allow him to get the advantage of you. Read on. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Because you're supposed to learn how he's coming. You're supposed to know how the devil is coming. You everybody understand that? Oh. So now he doesn't have an advantage because you know how to see him when he's coming. That's if you um, learn from the things that was written for the time before you. Then you can see him coming. Do everybody understand that? Oh. Okay. Okay. You can see how he's coming and what he's coming for. This should be a, this should be a universal answer to this question when I ask y'all this question. Uh, everybody should know this. If you don't know this, you know, this, that's a shame. Okay, everybody should know this. Um, not, you're supposed to know how Satan is coming and what is he coming for. What is Satan coming for? To destroy Yeah, thank you. See, 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 see. Yeah, one reason, when he show up, he's showing up for one reason and one reason only, and that's to destroy something. Okay, <laughs> he's, the, you know, he's, he's showing up to destroy. Let's get St. John's chapter 10. St. John's chapter 10. St. John's chapter 10. Then we're going to go from there to Genesis chapter 2. St. John's chapter 10. And we're going to start right at the point at verse 10. St. John's 10 and 10. Read. The thief cometh not, but for to steal. Yeah, that the thief is Satan. Everybody understand that? Right. And when he come to steal something, that's just not, that's not the whole end game. The whole end game is just not the, what Satan need, but what he's stealing. Okay? He's an entity. He's a demon, okay? You know, he's stealing for a purpose. The thief cometh not but for to steal, read on. And to kill. Yeah, what does he need to, to kill? He's killing for a purpose. Read on. And to destroy. And then that purpose is to destroy. To destroy. The Apostle Peter teaching a sermon, uh, teaching a lesson, stated the same thing. That Satan is walking around like a devouring lion, seeking whom he may destroy. Okay, so this is something that, like I said, if you didn't know this, then something is, that's just a pity. <laughs> you don't know Satan is coming to destroy. Everybody understand that? Oh. Let's get the book of, now what is he, what is, uh, Satan coming to destroy. 
What is he coming to destroy? Now answer now. Let me see how many of y'all can answer that question. What is Satan coming to destroy? Huh? Why are y'all all trying to answer at the same time? Like, that mean you ain't confident in your answer? That mean you supposed to wait for everybody else to finish? Don't destroy me! <laughs> you want your voice to get lost in the audience. Because you ain't confident of your... You don't want to stand out and be heard, okay? Because you ain't confident. What is Satan coming to destroy? I, I, believe, I believe in Jesus Christ. Sum it up for me. What is Satan coming to destroy? If you had to sum it up. What is Satan coming to destroy? He's coming to destroy good. That's how you sum it up. Anything good. Because he's evil. Okay? So anything good is the enemy. So if anything good is going on in your life, guess who's going to show up? Good relationship, right? The devil show up, right? Only by pride come contention, right? Right? All right, the devil show up. If you're having a good meal, right? Even ask me a good meal. A fly land on it. You'd be like, what the hell? Somebody come and talk over it with them. They leave a cloud of breath over your plate. You just be like, anything good, anything good. The devil is coming to mess it up. Do everybody understand that? Let's get that. Let's get the things written before us, before our time. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Read on. Which the Lord God made. Read on. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Okay, right. You see, Satan showed up. See that? Do everybody see that? Some of y'all don't know that the serpent is the devil. Huh? I got a precept this for you. Hmm? Yes, I do. You mean, I, I, I hear the voice of confidence. I don't hear the voice of confidence that everybody knows. Give me, give me the book of Revelations chapter 12. Revelations chapter 12. And verse 3, please. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 3. Read that for me, please. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Read on. And behold, a great red dragon. Okay, a great red dragon. Okay, who is this dragon? Let's get uh, verse 9 real quick. Verse 9. Read that. And the dragon was cast out. Read on. That old serpent. That what? Old serpent. Read on. Called the devil. Okay, everybody see that? God. Why is it saying old serpent? Going all the way back to the beginning. The Garden of Eden. Yeah, yeah, because we in the we in the book of Revelations. This is John the Revelator. That he's referring to that serpent that was in during the, in the beginning during the time of Adam. Hmm. Everybody understand that? God. That old serpent. Read on. Called the devil. Call who? The devil. Called the devil. Read on. And Satan. Okay, is there any mistake on that? Anybody mistaken that? La huh? La that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Read on. Which deceiveth the whole world. Let's go back to Genesis chapter three. Genesis chapter 3. So now we can speak with confidence. We know who that serpent is. That old serpent is the devil. And Satan. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Read on. Now the serpent. Who's the serpent? The devil. And Satan. Okay. That ain't, that ain't different people. He wants you to think. Yeah, he's different. You know, he's different people. That old serpent, now the serpent, read on, was more subtle than any beast of the field. Read on. Which the Lord God had made. Read on. And he said unto the woman. He said unto the woman, this woman is Eve. Read on. Yea, have God said. The woman is Eve, the wife of Adam. And he's asking her as Adam is absent from this scene. Have God said. He's asking her what God said. So she already got a commandment from God. And now he's about to speak against this commandment. Have God said, read on, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yeah, see that question? You see that? See that? Now, Satan is there to do what? Destroy. To, to, to destroy what? Good. And what's good? What's good that's going on right there? She in paradise, right? <laughs> mm, 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 mm. 
Right? You see that? Par paradise. Do y'all understand that? We're going to get the precepts on. She's in pa she shouldn't have a problem with nothing. Okay? Right? Right? Because she's in paradise. The fruits of immortalities. The fruit of every tree in the midst of the garden. Right? Every tree, the fruit of every tree in the garden, rather. Right? Right? Immortality, perfect weather, I mean, everything. <laughs> right? But it was, why Eve and not Adam? Why he ain't go to Adam while he was alone? Adam is alone somewhere and Eve is alone somewhere. Why Eve and not Adam? Because in paradise, this woman still found a problem with something. Right? Remember in order for the demons to be in you, there got to be something already wrong with you. Remember that? Remember that? And, and what was the slight issue that she had that she didn't even know she had? I'm under this man. <laughs> now, why he speaking to God that he got to speak to me? Like, why can't I? You know, right, 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 right. So Satan looked at him. <laughs> Satan was like strategizing. <laughs> oh, I got a way to destroy paradise. Going to offer her more than what she already had. At least she believed that. So now he's coming, okay, to do what? He said, what have God have said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2, read. And the woman said unto the serpent. Read on. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Read on. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Read on. God have said. Read on. Ye shall not eat of it. Read on. Neither shall ye touch it. Neither what? Neither shall ye touch it. Read on. Lest ye die. Okay, so she was fully educated. <laughs> she knew. Read on. And the serpent said unto the woman. Read on. Ye shall not surely die. Right away, he's speaking against God. Speaking against the God of the Bible, okay, this is Jesus Christ that's in the volume of the book. When you read God, is referring to him. Do everybody understand that? No matter where you read it at in the scriptures, everybody understand that? Very few places is referring to the angels, and this is usually with a lowercase g. Everybody understand that? Um, but when it says, if God said, and he said, you shall not die, he's calling God a liar. You don't believe him. He's speaking against the goodness. Read. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Read on. Then your eyes shall be opened. Read on. And ye shall be as God. You see that God, lowercase g. Y'all see that lowercase g, right? Right? See that? Offer to something. I could be in a better position than what I am not right now. That's what you want, don't you? You should be as gods. Read on. Knowing good and evil. Now, like I said earlier, mind you, she's already in paradise. Why would you want more? <laughs> Go back to Genesis chapter chapter 3 and verse 5. Read it again. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Then what? Then your eyes shall be opened. Then your eyes shall be opened. Read on. And you shall be as God. And you shall be what? As God. Read on. Knowing good and evil. Okay, so now where are they at, everybody? Paradise. Okay, they're already in paradise. Do she need to be, do she need anything else than what she already has? Ah. I mean, answer it again. Do she need anything else than what she already has? Ah. Okay, right. So why is she desiring something else? What was the... What was the curse that was put on Eve? Thy desire. Why y'all why y'all hesitating on that? What was the curse that was put on Eve? She'll be what? Read on. And when the woman and, and no and um and what? And say on and say on. And what? So why did the Lord use that as the curse? What was going why did he use that as a punishment for Eve? Because that's what she didn't want. She didn't want Adam to rule over her. Do everybody understand that? 